Welcome to Mobile Medical Media's video review of ultrasound-guided endovenous laser therapy of the greater saphenous vein. This tutorial reviews how to use ultrasound to determine if varicose veins are caused by venous reflux and how to thermally seal the greater saphenous vein with laser therapy. A 51-year-old bank teller presents to your office complaining of painful and unsightly varicose veins on the superior medial aspect of her right lower leg. She has a history of hypertension controlled with an ACE inhibitor and is otherwise healthy. After discussion of the various diagnostic and therapeutic options, the decision is made to use ultrasound to assess for valvular incompetence of the superficial venous system of her lower extremity, and if present, to guide endovenous laser therapy, or EVLT, to thermally seal her right greater saphenous vein and resolve her varicosities. EVLT is a minimally invasive procedure that can be performed in the office. Compared to surgical stripping, the traditional method for treating varicose veins, EVLT does not require general anesthesia and has significantly lower risks of surgical complications such as bleeding and infection. Ultrasound enables assessment of the superficial venous system of the lower extremities and allows for direct visualization of the introducer sheath and laser fiber during initial insertion into the vein and while advancing the sheath and laser fiber towards the proximal greater saphenous vein. Prior to performing EVLT, it is essential to use ultrasound to establish the presence of reflux in the greater saphenous vein and to map the vein for treatment. With the patient in a standing position, use a linear transducer to scan the entire great saphenous vein. Start at the saphenofemoral junction, or SFJ, with the transducer oriented in a transverse plane. Identify the common femoral vein and the femoral artery. The artery is lateral to the common femoral vein, and the greater saphenous vein is medial to the common femoral vein. Slide the probe down the leg, following the greater saphenous vein distally. The vein is easy to identify by locating the compartment in which it courses. The superficial fascia is seen in the near field, and the deep muscular fascia is below the vein. The image of the vein bounded by superficial and deep fascial layers is reminiscent of an eye, with the fascial boundaries representing the eyelids and the vein itself representing the iris. An alternative approach can be performed where the transducer is placed along the medial aspect of the knee and the vein is followed proximally towards the head. Normal greater saphenous vein diameter is less than or equal to 0.3 centimeters. Using color flow, assess for passive reflux in the vein by having the patient Valsalva. A normal passive reflux should last no longer than 0.5 seconds. Active reflux can be assessed by squeezing the calf. Active reflux should also last less than 0.5 seconds. Reflux in the deep venous system should last no longer than one second. Note that the greater saphenous vein lies deeper within the tissues as you move cephalad. As you make your way towards the saphenofemoral junction, assess the vein for discontinuity and excessive tortuosity that may make threading a laser fiber difficult. Change the patient to the supine position. Prep and drape the patient along the medial aspect of the knee in a standard sterile fashion. Prepare the linear transducer in a sterile probe sheath and locate the greater saphenous vein in the region of the medial aspect of the knee. Inject a skin wheel of 1% lidocaine without epinephrine at the planned insertion site. Using real-time ultrasound guidance, cannulate the greater saphenous vein with the introducer needle. Using the Seldinger technique, thread a J-wire into the vein. It may be necessary to advance the straight end of the J-wire if the greater saphenous is particularly tortuous. This can be done safely but requires a delicate touch and should only be attempted by those who have gained experience with this technique. Use a number 11 blade to nick the skin along the wire and advance a 5 French introducer over the wire. The tip of the introducer should be placed 2 to 3 centimeters distal to the saphenofemoral junction. The tip of the introducer can be recognized on ultrasound as a hyperechoic linear structure with a tapering end. Gently wiggling the introducer will enhance its visibility. Next, tumescent anesthesia is injected around the introducer sheath to act as a heat sink for the laser energy and to compress the vein around the laser fiber to ensure complete ablation. 
Mix 25 milliliters of 1% lidocaine and 10 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate solution with 500 milliliters of normal saline. Under ultrasound guidance, insert a 3-inch, 23-gauge spinal needle adjacent to the insertion site of the introducer sheath. Use a Klein pump to infiltrate the entire tumescent solution perivenously. The hypoechoic tumescent solution will separate the anterior and posterior fascia that surround the vein and create a perivenous halo that is 1.5 to 2 centimeters in diameter. Use a liberal amount of solution to ensure that the tumescent extends all the way to the saphenofemoral junction. Next, thread the laser fiber through the introducer sheath. The fiber has markings to ensure proper placement within the sheath. When the fiber is advanced to the first mark, its tip will be at the same level as the tip of the introducer sheath. Leaving the laser fiber in place, withdraw the introducer sheath about 2 centimeters, exposing the distal portion of the laser fiber. The finder beam on the laser fiber enables visualization of the tip through the skin. Use ultrasound to verify that the tip of the laser fiber is inferior to the saphenofemoral junction. Activate the laser while continuously withdrawing the laser fiber at a rate of 1 centimeter every 5 seconds, but applying more energy to the cephalad portion of the vein. The goal is to deliver between 60 and 80 joules of energy per centimeter. For the average 30 centimeter greater saphenous vein, the total energy delivered would be 2,100 joules. Generally, laser ablation time totals 90 to 120 seconds. After removing the laser fiber and introducer sheath, clean the insertion site and apply a compression dressing. You are able to use ultrasound to identify incompetence of the greater saphenous vein in your 51-year-old patient with varicose veins. She elects to undergo EVLT and the ultrasound-guided procedure is completed with ease. She's discharged from her clinic visit with compression hose and no limits on her activity. Ultrasound is used both to assess patients' lower extremity superficial venous systems for valvular reflux and to guide endovenous laser therapy for varicose veins if reflux is identified. It is critical to ultrasonographically assess the entire length of the greater saphenous vein to prepare for the procedure and to identify potential barriers to the procedure, such as extreme tortuosity or discontinuity of the vein.